Okay. Hi, Stat 3004, Stat 7304, 11 a.m. Can you hear me? Yes, Ned says yes. Lewis says yes, that's good. All right, so um, welcome to our lecture Friday. Um, I sent you a few announcements on Blackboard. We'll be doing a few things with the uh, birth test continuous time mark of chains today and a bit of queuing theory. Um, are there questions, probably questions about the project, uh, maybe quick ones before we continue. Any questions about the project? No, no questions? Okay, so let's get back to the, um, to the readings. And, um, oh yeah, sorry. What I wanted to show you also is uh, the self-study guide. So the self-study guide is now complete. You've got the self-study guide on the website and it's complete uh, in the sense that it has everything that I'm suggesting that you study for this course. Um, so we're going here still through activity, um, well, seven really, basics of CTMC, where activity eight is mostly your uh, project. Um, activity nine has a whole bunch of things. Most of them are for a skimming. Uh, and so even though, um, all I wanna say is in activity nine, even though it says read, uh, read the theorem statements, not necessarily the proofs. Um, and then activity 10, Probability and measure uh, is really optional, meaning that uh, it's not going to be examinable. Uh, but I'll see how much we could uh, speak about that in the final uh, week or week and a half, final week and a half perhaps. Um, you had in the tutorial, in some of the tutorials last Friday, you had a problem about the Borel Cantelli lemma, and that was actually a mix up in communication between me and the tutors. Uh, but that's not bad. So we'll, we'll speak about Borel Cantelli when we speak about activity 10. Okay, so we're back to uh, activity seven, basics of CTMC. And actually what I wanna do today is, um, is discuss um, a, a class of continuous time Markov chains that we call uh, birth death chains. Because in applications, they are, they're very common. And in fact, in, in your model too, the, in the SIS model, uh, birth death chains play a, a, well, the SIS model is a birth death chain. So, what I'll do, even though I have the text here, I'll, I'll just create a few uh, pages and uh, we'll see what this is about. So a birth, death, continuous time, Markov chain. Birth, you could say birth and death. Okay. So the state space in general, it will be zero, one, two, three, up to either N, some final N, or just zero, one, two, three, up to infinity, the, the natural numbers. Okay, that's gonna be your state space in a birth death continuous time Markov chain. Okay, and um, you know, the, so then you could put your states if you'd like on a, on a line. This is state zero, this is state one, this is state two, this is state three, etc. Okay, four, etc. Okay, now the, the, the key story is that uh, you have from uh, QI um, to I plus one, you have what you call lambda I, and from QI to I minus one, you have a mu I. So this is what you call the birth rate, and this is what you call the death rate, okay? So your birth rate lambda i here is going from state i to state i plus one. So this is what you'll call lambda zero. This is what you'll call lambda one. And this is what you'll call lambda two, um, et cetera. So don't confuse these lambdas with the diagonal of the generator matrix that we also sometimes call uh, denote by lambda. And the death rate, somehow death became green, is this is mu one. This is mu two, this is mu three, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So here I is going from zero, one, two, et cetera. And here I is going from one, two, three, et cetera. And that et cetera might 
be up to a finite number if we have a finite number of states. So maybe we have a finite state n or maybe not. Okay. And when I write these are the q's, what I want to say is that qi to j uh, equals zero when j does not equal i plus one or i or j or i plus one or i minus one or i. Okay. Yeah. So how does the generator matrix look for a birth, death, continuous time Markov chain? So the generator matrix, you'll have here a minus lambda i, minus lambda zero, whoops, minus lambda zero, lambda zero, okay. And then here you'll have a mu one, right? Because mu one is this death rate from state one to state zero, that's just mu one. And here you'll have a lambda one, so what do I have here? What's in, in that spot? And these are all zeros elsewhere. Yep, exactly. As Ned says, is minus lambda one plus mu one. Okay, that's it. Okay, and this is going to be now a lambda two. And this is going to be a lambda three. And that's going to be a mu two. And that's going to be a mu three. And this is again going to be the minus lambda two plus mu two, writing a bit small, minus lambda three plus, whoops, minus here, lambda three plus mu three, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And maybe this matrix is finite if you have n, well, in this, if this is n, then n plus one states, or maybe it goes on forever. So it's a tridiagonal structure. And so, my, you know, so you've got the death rates here and you've got the birth rates here. Okay. So, so much has happened. Uh, I mean, there's just so much analysis and so many models, so many basic models that fit this paradigm of a birth and death continuous time Markov chain. Okay. So let me actually start in, to speak about the models that, that, uh, that we have. Um, and one of them is, I'll, I'll connect to where we stopped in the last lecture. Uh, whoops, let's do this. Let's go to SWJ10. So the MM1Q, okay. So we're in SWJ10. One more things in the chat. Uh, yeah, and William asking, this is a generator matrix, right? Yeah, that's the generator matrix. Did I call it something else verbally? Did I say transition probability matrix? It's a generator matrix if I did not call it gen. Yeah, so this guy here, where are we? This is the generator matrix. Okay, so um, back to SWJ10. So here is the, in a sense, the simplest, uh, birth death Markov chain is one where those lambdas are constant at lambda and the mu's are constant at mu. Okay, so the rate does not depend on what state you are. So you just have this is either it's like a model with two parameters lambda and mu. Okay, well, it's maybe the simplest. This is still you, you, you might think that the finite one is simpler. I mean, this is this goes on for infinity. Okay, the state space is infinite. State space is zero, one, two, two, infinity. Okay, so we're seeing this type of model here and in something called the MM1Q. So now let me digress for a second and speak about this whole field of queuing theory, uh, which is actually very close to my heart. I mean, I did a lot of my early research and PhD and things like that in this field called queuing theory. I spoke about that. I spoke about this uh, a bit last week. So the story is, it's about congestion of systems of uh, queues of of delay, um, and um, many models that deal with how long you wait, what is the average time that you wait, uh, is the system going to be stable in supporting the rate of arrivals? Uh, what is the probability of waiting in a queue longer than a given time? How many servers you need? Is it better to configure things in the supermarket in a way that everybody waits in one big queue or are you better off having smaller queues, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a whole field. There are a few journals on queuing. Now, Joseph asks, 
is it possible to get positive QIJ even if it's not possible to make a jump? No. So the in the modeling, so what QIJ and we're talking about for I not equaling J being positive implies you can make a jump. Okay, and in birth death Markov chain, you you limit the you you limit the movements. You cannot have this movement, for example. Okay, you know otherwise you would have had Q three uh, sorry Q three zero, you know being positive. But Q three zero is actually zero. Okay. All right. So now it turns out that elementary queuing theory is 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 fully described by this object birth and death Markov chain. So it's kind of nice to see how these things play out. Now for this, we actually need to kind of speak about names of models. And that's just, I'll do this very quickly. And you'll see these models spread throughout both books as well, all three books, SP and uh, SWJ and uh, MC. Okay, names of models. Uh, so this is something called Kendall notation. Kendall notation. Now we live in a small world, so Kendall uh, was actually a mathematician in Cambridge, and he was a PhD supervisor of Daryl Daly, um, the author of the of your one of the authors of your epidemiology book. Uh, so that's Kendall. Okay. So Kendall notation for Qs goes: you do A, B, S, K. This is basically the Q. So what you're doing is you're you're kind of describing your queuing model. So here you this you'll call the arrival process. And this you'll call the service process. And here you'll say that's the number of servers. And this is the size of waiting room. Okay, it's just kind of a notation where now I can, so for people that deal with queuing theory and very soon for, for you guys, if I look at like uh, M, G, two, five, okay. What I know is that the arrival process for this queue is M. Now, what what does this M mean? So these processes, these two pro, these two classes of processes, can be maybe of the of the set that might include an M. Let me write it in like this. Might have an M, and that's Markovian or memoryless. Okay, it might have a G, which is like general. It might have a D, which is deterministic. Okay, so a M Markovian memoryless arrival process for this process that actually means that it, that's a Poisson process. Okay, so it means that individuals or items or whoever is being served in the queue arrive according to a Poisson process which is a Markovian memoryless process. So at every time instance, the chance of somebody arriving is independent of what has happened previously, okay? G would be a more general, if we, should we have put here a G, then that would mean that, you know, we have arrival where the times between arrivals might be IID random variables that are not necessarily exponential, okay? So it's not necessarily a Poisson process. D would mean that we have an arrival exactly every, 7.3 time it's deterministic so you know the this is the most general and these two are specific cases of that now the second letter here the service process well what what we're speaking about here is um so the the story we need to have in mind is there's like this queue i think i drew this last week and i did and there's this kind of arrival there's the arrival of, of people or item or etc whoops and here is the server, okay? So whenever the server, we spoke about a coffee maker, is, is serving somebody um, is the duration of time that that uh, individual or item is served is it, uh, from A. Again, is it, it can be a memory less, so that would mean exponential in that case. So that means that the duration of service is exponential. Or it can be general, for example, you know, maybe it has a gamma distribution of service or a uniform distribution of service, or deterministic, maybe service takes exactly one minute. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So by uh, having MG, what we mean we have Poisson arrivals and general service. So now this two means how many servers there are. So here there's server and server. This is the two. 
that's these two, okay, two servers. So two servers can serve up to two people simultaneously, okay? And five means the total capacity of the system. So if I draw here two more people, that's now a full system because there's five, okay? So that's kind of the general terminology. But let, let's not do too much with this. Let me just let me just speak about the few specific models that we'll play. So the first one is what we call an NM1. Okay. And if we don't put anything here on this thing, then that's by default. I'll write it like with gray. Like be, it's by default infinity, but you don't write this infinity. So the MM1Q. Okay. So now you're learning about the MM1Q. I mean, I love the MM1Q. Everybody loves the MM1Q. There's just so many things written about the MM1Q. But actually, it's a relatively simple process, but there's still a whole lot of things that can be done. And this example, now getting back to this um, Statistics with Julia book, uh, that's the MM1Q, okay? So MM1Q, we'll see in a few minutes that it can be described in two or three minutes, that it can be described just by a birth death process with constant birth rates and constant death rates, okay? Stop me if there are any questions. Can you hear me, by the way? I, I, I think you can, because you ask a thing from time to time. I'm guessing you can. Thank you, thanks, man. All right. Um, we're gone, what happened here? Not recent, these guys, SP4, all right. So MM1Q is now going to be a system like that. I'll draw it again where you have a server. I'll just draw the server. That's, let's put this diamond for the server. You've got a queue and you've got individuals or items or whatever arriving. Yeah, you've got a, it's like a dog arriving. Our queue is not just biased to humans. It also supports dogs. Okay, but we don't model that. Okay, and they arrive according to a, Poisson process, okay? And they also arrive according to, a, and then each the server, if, if there's nothing to do, the server is just kind of waiting around, playing with fingers, phone, texting, whatever. But if there's an item here as you do, or a person here, or a customer here as you do in the system, then that person is served with uh, a memoryless exponential distribution. So the two parameters will say lambda is going to be the arrival rate and mu, so that's the number of arrivals per time unit, okay? So that's something very concrete if you're speaking about a coffee stand. How many people arrive per hour? So you need to set, are you speaking in hours or minutes or days or seconds or whatever? So if lambda is eight and you're speaking in, <coughs> sorry, in hours, then that means that there's about an average of eight people in arriving. So you have a Poisson process at that rate. And mu would be the inverse of the mean of the service duration. So that means the service duration is exponential with parameter mu. So, you know, the expectation of each service is one on mu. Okay. So these are the two parameters. Now let's define x of t as, let me change it to this thing. So x of t is number in system at time t. Sometimes we call that the queue, although, you know, in the queue is also the person standing is still in the queue, okay, standing in front of the, of the coffee stand, so x of t. So x of, so x of t can be neatly described by a birth death, now we go back to this birth death, birth death CTMC with the rate lambda i just equaling lambda constantly, and the rate mu i just equaling mu all the time. So let's see why. Here we have zero, this is x of t, this is, this is a state of x of t being zero, this is a state of x of t being one, this is a state of x of t being two, this is a state of x of t being three, okay? So if there's zero people in the system, I'll draw the queue again, the system is, Empty, nothing is there. There's only one thing that can happen. Well, we can have an arrival, and that's going to be at rate lambda. Okay, so you know, and then the arrival occurred. Okay, we got an arrival at rate lambda. So the how long is the system going to be here at this state zero? It's going to be exponential for a duration of mean with a mean duration one on lambda. Okay. 
Now this person is here and the server is, this is a server, the server is serving the person. Okay, then we're in this state because we're now, what you see here in the image is x of t equals one. All right, we're there. At this point, two events can happen. You can have a uh, departure, and it's be somehow consistent with previous colors. That would be at rate right new. Okay, why? Because the server is serving, and you know there can be a the person has just departed because the service is completed, or maybe and that and if that happens, then you know the person is gone. All right? See ya. Okay, gone. All right. Or alternatively, there can be another arrival at rate lambda. Okay. And if, say, we move to the state of another arrival and we have another person here, then uh, now there can be, a, again, a departure at rate mu or another arrival at rate lambda, et cetera. So that's all that happens in this sense, birth, death, continuous time Markov chain with constant rates. And that exactly matches the MM1Q. Okay. So we can look at this continuous time Markov chain. Okay, we can look at this continuous time Markov chain. And indeed, this is what is done here in SWT. Um, so let me connect this to the Dube Gillespie algorithm, which was implemented here. This is the um, previously kind of the, the first example does this for this three state Markov chain with generator matrix like this. Some arbitrary Markov chain, okay? And it, it does do Gillespie like this, and Dube Gillespie gets a generator matrix. But you don't have to speak about the generator matrix. You can just get a Dube Gillespie that, that's gonna get a rate lambda and a rate mu and an initial condition. So how many people are in the system at time zero? And what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, if you're at state zero, okay? So if you're at state zero, then you're gonna advance time with the Rand exponential with mean one on lambda. Okay, you give the parameter to the exponential here one on lambda. And then you'll clearly move to state one. So the embedded Markov chain, let's look at the embedded Markov chain here. The embedded Markov chain is, here's the embedded chain or the jump chain. So from state zero, you would probably you always with probability zero move to the same state. So the embedded chain always has zeros on the diagonal. But state zero with probability one, you move to state one. What are the probabilities here in the embedded chain of going from state one to state zero or to state two? What is, what's this probability? And what's this probability? So that's this one, for example. What's the chance of going from state one to state zero? Yep, Emily, very good. So mu over lambda plus mu, and then this will be the complement to what Emily said, lambda over lambda plus mu. Okay, if lambda equals mu, it's gonna be half and half, okay? But you know, if lambda is greater than mu, this will be bigger. This will be like 0 0.6 and 0 0.4, for example, okay? If lambda is less than mu, this will be 0 0.6, for example, and 0 0.4. I mean, depending on what lambda you are. Okay. So going back to the code here. Um, so you see here, we did this transition. This Q equals one was effectively drawing from this probability distribution here, which is degenerate probability distribution. With probability one, you go to state one, all right? But when you get to this one, else, what does it mean else? So if your state is not zero, so that means you implicitly assume, you know, that means that state is greater than zero, then your sojourn time, oops, sorry. Your sojourn time is going to be now an exponential with the rate which is the sum of the rates so the mean is going to be the inverse of the sum of the means and then you're going to move uh, this basically means you add to q either plus one or minus one so look at look at this and see how this works so you're getting here a bernoulli random variable 
with probability of success being lambda over lambda plus mu. And this, this thing of taking two times Bernoulli minus one takes a Bernoulli that lives on zero one and puts it on negative one one. We've seen that trick before. Okay. And that's it. That is it. So this is, this is Dub Gillespie for the MM1 Q. Uh, yes, and that says Julia probably uses a parameter as a mean instead of the rate. Yes, I know. Yes, indeed. I agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, because AJ asked. And Nicole, you just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the parameterization in Julia is annoying. It's statistician parameter, not probabilist parameter, uh, the inverse of the rate. Okay, so now this Dub Gillespie is also slightly different, and keep that in mind for your homework assignment, uh, which doesn't do, deal with M1Q, but you know, a similar type of thing. Um, the Dub Gillespie we had in the previous example just returned the state, just returned one value at time t. Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting sick, it's impossible. Okay, that's it. Now, the, this Dub Gillespie actually returns all of the times t, and all of the values of Q. Okay, so it, so this pushes to the right. It records it records a full history. Okay, it's just it returns it returns a full trace of the process, which is maybe good if you want to plot the process or do something like that. Okay, or do a few other things. It's actually important. I'll I'll, I'll summarize a few of those. Okay, so it returns at every time t when there is a jump, it returns that time. Now keep in mind if you're going to plot this thing that's being returned here, that is the times versus a Q, what you're gonna get is you'll get like, this say this is say times zero. Well, it's not say, it is times zero. This is say 1.3 1, 1. was the first jump, say time 2.7 was second jump, and 2.9 was the third jump, okay? If you're just gonna plot these T values against the Q values, you're gonna get something that looks like, maybe like this. Okay, but this is not what the continuous time Markov chain does. The continuous time Markov chain doesn't do this straight line between the things. The continuous time Markov chain was in state zero until this time, and then it made a jump to this time, and then it was there until this time, and made a jump here, and then made another jump, etc. Right? That's the continuous time Markov chain does that. So this function here, all it does is stitch steps. It creates the, uh, this trajectory, the orange trajectory from the red trajectory, okay? Read the details if you're interested. I mean, the reason this is important is here, now here what we're seeing is, is a trace of the MM1Q, and that indeed looks like a trace of the continuous time Markov chain, okay? I mean, we don't have those full, uh, you know, the circles like, like that, meaning that we had a jump down, etc. but up to that, it's okay. So here is what we have is a Q-level process. Okay. Questions about that? All right. Now, if we go back to this thing, and uh, as Emily mentioned, uh, you've, we've got these probabilities here. Um, and so just intuitively, what would happen in this process if uh, lambda was greater than mu? Well, let me add more pages in there. So what I want to ask is, what if lambda is greater than mu? What if lambda equals mu? And what if lambda is less than mu? Okay, so what happens in this process if lambda is greater than mu? Kind of qualitatively long-term, lambda greater than mu. What happens here? What happens here? Keeps going. Keeps going. I mean, it might go down from time to time, but in general, it keeps going, right? So lambda greater than mu means that your arrival rate, I mean, it's very natural when I say it the way I'm gonna say it now, the arrival rate, arrival rate greater than service rate, okay? That's like in a coffee stand where the, uh, you have say 10 people arriving per hour, uh, but it takes you, um, uh, you know, but you, you're, you're, 
say in, in, if this is say five, okay, that means that you can only serve five people an hour. Okay, so the mean service time is uh, 12 minutes. Okay, that's, I, I've waited 12 minutes for a single service coffee. I was so appalled. I don't do take away coffee anymore. It's COVID-19. Okay, no, I do from time to time. All right, so the arrival rate greater than service rate. So in this case, this process will continue to grow. Okay, so trajectories will kind of continue to grow forever. What it would mean actually is that since the state space is countably uh, infinite, it's not finite, uh, even though this continuous time Markov chain is irreducible because you can get from any state to any state, uh, it's not going to have a stationary distribution. Okay, so, and it's not going to be recurrent. It's gonna be a transient continuous time Markov chain. Okay, even though it has a single class. All right, now what's gonna happen if lambda is less than mu? So by kind of similar logic, what's gonna happen if lambda is less than mu? Q tends to zero. Okay, so now this is where, this is where, this is where, that, that's, so Emily says Q tends to zero. And you know, the, the Q is stochastically bounded to live around zero. But the nice thing, and this is where queuing theory and stochastic analysis of systems is nice. You see the Q, yeah, you started here at 20 and it kind of, you know, did this general kind of decrease as opposed to, you know, in, in Ned's world, this would kind of generally grow. And by the way, it would grow at a rate that is roughly lambda minus mu times t. Okay, that would be kind of the asymptotic line. Yeah. Um, so it tends to zero, but then it actually lives with these stochastic fluctuations around zero. Okay, that's kind of the nice thing. So, and that's where you need stochastic analysis. So even if you're back to the coffee world, anybody here work in the coffee industry, by the way? Okay, no comment. So back to the coffee world, even if you're, uh, you now put this at five, so you say you have a rival of five customers per hour and you put this at 10, okay? All right, so that's five and 10, okay? All right, um, you know, you have more service capacity than your rival capacity, you're still gonna get some Q, and that's where queuing is interesting. Okay, so, and then yeah, X of T is recurrent, it's actually going to be what we call positive recurrent. And I'm going to informally speak about those two terms now, positive recurrent and the other one, not recurrent. So what does it mean that a state is recurrent? And you remember this probably from the discrete time. Okay. Okay. <coughs> So a state being recurrent, a state is recurrent if we are in that state, if we return to it with probability one. Right, so, and here in every state we're in, so we're, we've now been in state uh, five, we're going to return again to state five here, we're again in state five here, we've returned to state five. Well, maybe that's not five, that's seven or something, okay? But to every state we return probability one. Since there's a, there's a single class in this Markov chain, then all states are current. Now, what's lambda equals new? We already said what are gonna be the probabilities here? They're going to be with lambda equals mu. The probabilities of transition each time are going to be half, 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 half. Okay, so we're kind of doing a symmetric walk, and actually, then xt is recurrent. So we do return to each state with probability one, but xt is what we call null recurrent. Okay, let me make this distinction now. So call tau i. That's the infimum. T uh, greater than uh, zero, such that X T equals I. So that's the hitting time of the state, okay? The hitting time of the state. All right, so if um, the after, well, you need to be careful, X T equals I, okay. So if the probability of, um, If the probability of uh, tau i is finite, given that um, x zero equals i, 
and x0 uh, plus what I want to say is not i. Okay, that's a loose way to say it. Okay, so I've, I've, I've now at time zero made a transition from out of state i. And now I'm asking if this probability tau i is going to be finite. So if this probability is one, that is what you call recurrent. Okay, and if it's zero, Oh, sorry, if it's less than one, then it's transient. Okay. Now, the MM1Q is an example where if lambda equal, and, and then I've said recurrent, you're gonna get a transient here. Okay, you're gonna transient. But if lambda equals mu, then it's still recurrent. However, the expected value of tau i, given x0 equals i and x0 plus not i, so you just made a transition, okay, is actually going to be infinity. Okay, so that random variable is heavy-tailed. It doesn't have a finite expectation. So the, that critical case of lambda being exactly mu is, is a bit of a funny case. Okay, now it turns out that in the null recurrent case, you don't have a stationary distribution, but in the positive recurrent case, you do have a stationary distribution. Now, also, the distinction between positive recurrent and null recurrent is only important if you have an infinite state space. Okay, so a bit more on that is, is obviously in the reading, but let's now get back to the MM1Q and let's see what we can do with MM1Q for analysis. Okay. Questions? All right, so stationary distribution. Okay, so the stationary distribution of a continuous time Markov chain is obtained by taking the vector pi, which can be an kind of the infinite vector if we're speaking about infinite state space, multiplying it by the generator matrix Q and asking that to be zero. Okay, this zero is a row of zeros. Okay, and then also pi transpose uh, times one. Well, let me just do pi one like this. Pi one pi times the vector of ones, and this is a column vector, equals the scalar one, okay? This is just some pi i, i zero to infinity equals one. Okay, so the, with, with the birth, death, continuous time Markov chain, you can actually do quite a lot to get the stationary distribution, okay? Why? Because you're, let, let's, let's, let's actually write this, so I'll write, I'm gonna write these equations explicitly, I'll write pi zero, pi one, pi two, pi three, and they actually go on forever, but that's okay. And now I'm gonna multiply, let me cut this a bit. I'm gonna multiply by the generator matrix. And the generator matrix is minus lambda zero, lambda zero. I'm now writing a general birth death and continuous time Markov chain. Hold on, a question with, from Madhusa. Why is the hitting time probability the same as saying it is finite? I don't understand. The hitting time probability is, no, so the, we're speaking about the probability of hitting time. The, this is a probability of the hitting time being finite, meaning you return to that state with probability one. Okay, the alternative tau i can be infinity if that infimum is never attained because the infimum of an empty set is zero is infinity, okay, is, is denoted as infinity, okay. And this is uh, mu one minus lambda one plus mu one, open close brackets, lambda two, this is a zero, and this is a mu two minus lambda two plus mu two, lambda two, and this is also a a zero here and a zero here and a zero, the many, many zeros in this matrix. Okay, and this thing continues forever. And I'm writing now this equation, okay? And that's gonna be pi zero, pi one, pi two, etc. Okay. So you can actually spell out these equations. I won't I won't do it fully now. Okay, I won't do it fully now. 
once per line. So, but what, what, what I mean is that you can, you can write out the, you can take this, multiply by this, and it's actually now, and that's going to equal that. That's not going to be so complicated, right? So pi zero is just minus lambda zero pi zero plus uh, lambda one times pi one. And then let's do it for the second row. So you, I'm, I'm again taking that and multiply, well, second column, I should say. I'm doing that and multiplying by that, and that equals that. So I'll say it in words. So pi one is lambda zero times pi zero plus lambda one times minus lambda one plus mu one time plus pi two times mu two, et cetera, et cetera. So you get the system of equations, okay? That's infinite. I mean, it, it will be finite if you have a finite state continuous time, uh, birth death process. Remember, we can have our birth death process just have finite state, okay? And the nice thing is that it actually has a solution, okay? It, it has like an explicit solution that's determined by the parameters, um, by these lambdas and these mu's, by the birth rates and the death rates, okay? Now you can also do it uh, in an even nicer way using something called detailed balance, which we're only skimming. Uh, but I'll, I'll go there and, and show it to you now. Where detail balance so, uh, is a slightly different set of equations. So instead of looking at these equations, what we're going to look is, is we're going to look at each two states. Okay, so this state i and this is state i plus one, for example. And we're going to put this invisible line between the states. And we'll say if there exists a stationary distribution, then pi i times this rate, which is lambda i, must equal pi i plus one times this rate, which is mu i. Okay, so you actually get a different system of equations. Um, I'll, I'll answer in a second, Gabriel. And that system of equations, pi i lambda i equals pi i plus one equals mu i. And these ones are even easier than these, okay? Uh, so detailed balance is in one of the sections below, uh, but if the system of equations has a solution where also sum pi i equals one, and that's also the stationary distribution, and that's the stationary distribution. Now, uh, yes. Now, Gabriel, fully, 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 Gabriel, seven points, if we had a point system for that. Thank you for the correction. This is zero. In a continuous time Markov chain, this is zero. In a discrete time Markov chain, this is pi, of course. Thank you. Sorry. Well done, Gabriel. So Gabriel's fix is, it's not that pi q equals zero. Uh, it's not that pi q equals pi, pi q equals zero. Yeah. So q is a generator matrix. It's not a transition probability matrix. Thank you. So everything I said here about this multiplication, so just that right-hand side is not correct. Okay, it's all zero. So it's just this. Let's let, let's look for example the second equation. It's pi. Thanks, Gabriel. It's pi zero times this plus pi one times this plus pi two times this equals zero. Exactly. So you get the system of equations. You have a different system of equations called detailed balance, which is this one. This one is easier to solve because, of course, what you can do is then you can, you know, when, when you have this very nice thing, when you just put a line between two states, then you say pi i plus one is just uh, lambda i divided by mu i plus one pi i. Okay. So detail balance is slightly easier to solve here. Yeah? Okay. And if you continue this by recursion, what you get is that pi i plus one is lambda i times lambda i minus one times lambda i minus two, all the way up to lambda zero, divided by mu i plus one times mu i times mu i minus one, all the way to mu one times pi zero. So you're able to represent the stationary distribution at state i plus one in is using pi zero and all the other stationary distributions. And then you still know that sum i zero to infinity of pi i equals one. So you stick this thing in the sum, okay? And then pi zero is a constant. So what you get is 
and let me just write this, I'll, I'll write this in a slightly nicer way. I'll just write pi i equals the product. This capital product is completely not the pi. Okay, it's a product, okay, product of j going, um, say from zero to i minus one of lambda j divided by mu j plus one. Let's see if that's correct. So I hope I did this correctly. So the first entry of the product is mu one, the last entry pi i minus one, I think that's correct, okay. So you see, this is this is what you get from these equations, and if times pi zero, okay. So then you can stick this in here, and you pull out the pi zero. So you get pi zero equals one on the sum i zero to infinity product. This is a product j zero to I minus one of lambda j divided by mu j plus one. I hope I'm doing this correctly, I think I am. Okay. And this is, so this is like the probability of being at state zero in steady state, if a stationary distribution exists. Okay. So this series will only um, converge if, uh, say, if all the lambdas and mu's are, are, are equal, only in this case, okay? Otherwise, pi, all, otherwise, this series will not converge, okay? Now, if all the lambdas and mu's are equal, then, you know, you got here lambda and a lambda and a lambda and a lambda. So this is, this is easier, right? Because then this is just lambda to the power i plus one. And here you've got a mu and a mu and a mu and a mu, they're just constant mu, it's mu to the power uh, i plus one. So what you have is just the ratio of lambda over mu, which we denote as rho, okay, rho. And that's the rho that you would find here in SW10. And that rho has an operational meaning, okay. And it's the, uh, the effective load of the system. It's kind of how, how much of the system you're, you're using. It's, uh, it's some, some people call it the offer load. So we said we're only speaking about stationary distributions if lambda is less than mu. So that is if rho is less than one, if the load is less than one, all right? Then you go back here. Then you go back here and um, you uh, plug this thing in, etc., and you do the calculations, and well, simple ones. And what you're going to get is that pi i is nothing but one minus rho to the power uh, uh, is sorry, is going to be uh, one minus rho to the times rho. Let's see, rho to the power i. Yeah. That's what's going to get for i zero one two three and so. So what what do we call such a distribution? And and rho here has to be less than one. What do we call such a distribution? Geometric, or as Gabriel would say, goimetric. Thanks, Gabriel. All right, so um, so we get a goimetric distribution. Okay. Now, this geometric distribution is a stationary distribution of this continuous time Markov chain. There's not immediately a, a you, you think of the geometric distribution as, as coming from a sequence of Bernoulli trials, okay? There's not actually some Bernoulli trials happening here, but this is the long-term occupancy distribution where if you let this process now run, so before, as Emily said, it would tend to zero. Well, it would tend to live around zero where you can now think of, see, I'm gonna draw this kind of geometric distribution. I drew it like an exponential goes down, where, you know, in this state, or maybe the best way to draw it like this, imagine now the geometric distribution like that. That's, that's the best way to draw it, okay? So this, geom well, I'm drawing like an exponential, but that's a geometric distribution, okay? So the probability of being at state zero is, here I took a K, not an I. So if I put a zero here is one minus rho, okay? 
And that probability is important in queuing theory because that's how much you're wasting money. If you, any of you own a coffee stand, by the way? I'm sure many of you are coffee stand owners. So if you're employing people and your one minus rho is like, um, you know, 0 0.6, meaning that rho is 0 0.4, okay? So there's only an offer load on your stand on a, which is at a rate of 0 0.4. 0 0.6 of the time is, this is 0 0.6 F. 0 0.6 of the time, the stand is not usable. Okay, but you actually get the full distribution of the Q length. Of course, we can now speak about the mean Q length. So the mean Q length is gonna be, whoops, is gonna be the mean of this distribution, which happens to be, um, rho divided by one minus rho. Okay, so you see that as rho goes closer, closer to one, the mean explodes. Okay, this is only valid for rho less than one, the station distribution, otherwise there isn't station distribution. Okay, so that was the MM1Q, and you here you see Dub Gillespie simulation of the MM1Q, um, and you need that type of thing generally in your project. In your project, let me now connect this to your project, and we finish it that. So if we're looking at, this is, by the way, not the, I've updated the project on the website uh, after there were two uh, important corrections from Nick and Matt. Maybe others have found as well. And I'll finish in a second. So when you look at problem four, which is the SIS model, the SIS can be described as a um, birth death process. Okay, now in epidemics, we, want, we don't want positive recurrent things. We want those things to vanish, okay? So, you know, you, if, if you get to zero infected, you're done. However, in this problem C and D, in these C's and D's, um, sorry, in A and B, C and D, okay? In B, C and D, since A is positive and A is your actual Um, a is this guy here, up, up here, up at the top of the screen. That's your A, okay? That's your um, driving of infections independently kind of of, of how many are, are infected, right? It's just coming from the outside. So then the process is gonna be positive recurrent. So in this case, what you have here is a birth death continuous term local chain. And so then, what I did today in the lecture is related to B, C, and D here, okay? Um, the, the lecture that I'm gonna put a, um, online this weekend in the video is going to be queuing models that follow on from uh, the MM1Q. So I'll just say this in a word and we finish. So you also have a tutorial in a minute, some of you. Um, so, once we've got the MM1Q and, and we celebrated it, I mean, there's, there's many nice things with queuing theory and a lot of nice results, uh, but we'll just speak about in the, in the in another lecture, I'll speak about the MM infinity queue, meaning that there's an infinite number of servers, so nobody's waiting, okay? But there's still kind of a congestion phenomena, and the MMS queue with S greater than one, and the MM1K queue, like a queue with finite capacity, and the MMKKQ, which is called the Erlang loss system. So I'll speak about that in that, those videos. Um, it's not so critical, but it's good for your general knowledge. Not so critical for the assessment of the course. Any final questions before we leave? Okay, so AJ is asking, I mean, it's probably a vague question. I'm slightly confused about a bit of earlier topics still related to CT and C. Just with example, 4.1 and SP4, I'm a bit confused about the rate of Poisson process rate to individual transition online DTMC. Okay, let's look. Example, can you direct me? Example 4.4 and S, example 4.1. You have a page for that? Mm. Oh, here. 
example four point well come on example four point one Yeah, page 147, thanks. So, <coughs> okay, if any of you need to go to the tute, please do, or I'll continue, it's both good. So let n t be a Poisson process rate, lambda y n be a discrete time Markov chain. Uh, so you have a discrete time Markov chain, any discrete time Markov chain, uh, with transition probabilities u, i, j. And what you're creating, I mean, this is an introductory example. You're creating a continuous time Markov chain according to this discrete time Markov chain, okay? This is not the general, this is just the start of continuous time Markov chains, okay? So the purpose of this example was to, sh to, to show you how you can at least take a, take a, so here is Y of N, okay? You, 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 you say, hey, let's say you first live in a discrete world and that's y of n, you know, this is n equals zero or n equals one. Okay, let's put an n equals zero also. This is zero, this is n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, n equals four, n equals five. Okay, and now what you're doing is you're, um, you're saying you have in, in parallel, you have this Poisson process, n of t. Okay, so I'll put here t, put n of t. And I'm gonna put like, this is the first event. No, this is the second event. This is the third event. Okay, Poisson process is just a counting process like that. So what they're saying now is let's take this guy, Y of N, and let's take this guy, N of T, and let's create a process Y N of T. I mean, first of all, we'll agree that y n of t is a continuous time process because for any t, I can, if you give me t, give me a t, which is like this one, okay, this t is 2.3, say. I don't know why I like this number. Okay, so I stick here at 2.3. So n of t, n of 2.3 was one in this case. So that's y of one. So at time 2.3, I'm going to take y of one and y of one is this one. Okay, so time, well, that's not, not drawn for, this figure, but then at time 2.3, okay, I'm, I'm gonna take this time and I'm gonna say I'm going to be now y of one, okay? So y of one was this state, so it's this one, okay? And I'm gonna stay in this state all the way to this time and all the way to this time, so I'm actually all the way here and, and here. I'm in that state, okay? And in all these times below 2.3, I was in state, I was in, this state, which happened to be whatever it was up there. Okay, so it's taking a discrete time Markov chain, this one, and stretching the times between events according to a Poisson process. Now, in a continuous time Markov chain, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen because you don't have the luxury that, you, that everything is driven by a single Poisson process. You would only have that luxury if you take your generator matrix Q and everything in the diagonal is the same value. Okay, everything in the diagonal is the same value. So that would mean that the rates are the same value. But in general, you're gonna be in different states, different durations, and those durations are given by the generator of the, by the, ne the rates are, are by the negative of the generator of the, by negative of the diagonal of the generator matrix. Did that help, AJ? Okay, I hope so. Uh, okay, good luck with that. So it'll be a visit our Tuesday, another video, and a few more things as I wrote in Blackboard coming this weekend. No more questions? Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Okay, sure, Nick. Sure. Thanks, guys.